Hey, Shazam 15 here. Alright, this movie was Chipwrecked. Well, yeah, the full title, Chipmunks Movie 3, Chipwrecked. Uh, basically, what did it have? Well, it's a fairly chipmunky film. It's got the usual overly cute sentimentality, this is how a family should work morals, even if it is an unconventional one. Uh, inappropriate soundtrack, disguised just by being cutesy. Um, and when I say inappropriate, I mean morally inappropriate to put those sort of lyrics out there, especially on a children's thing. Uh, the typical family film bits, you know, a couple of jokes for the adults, a few for the kids, and that works, because like the producers say, they want you to come back and watch it again and again and again and get something more each time. Um, <coughs> let's see, what are the specifics involved? Well, oh yeah, I should probably give it a rough idea of what I think of it. It's a good film for what it is. It's fairly typical, it's a fairly typical offering of its franchise. Oh yeah, uh, the other thing which it does is there's lots of references to the previous films by virtue of the characters and arrangement, but... Uh, Right, plotline. It's been a while now since the Chipettes joined the ensemble. They've settled in with the Chipmunks. It works quite well. They're working really well together as a musical act. And they're going on holiday on a cruise. This is all very well and fine, except you're taking Alvin on a boat. Confined space, hyperactive Chipmunk. This isn't going to go well. Anyway, suffice to say, there is m hijinks aplenty. There is a begrudging guy in a pelican suit, who is in fact the antagonist from the previous movies. And, you know, that's how it goes. Once again, we've got a wonderful performance as David DeVille. That works well. Chipmunk's voice quite nicely. Anyway, oh uh, yes, back to the point of the plot. Basically, through a series of events that I won't reveal all of the ins and outs, the chipmunks end up going off the ship and into the ocean. They then wind up getting washed up on a desert island where there is a ten-year castaway psychotic lady who is searching for treasure, but we don't know this at the start. Anyway, there is a point where it actually does go a bit rescuous. It's kind of creepy, that bit. You're just going, I swear I saw this on Disney when I was very, very little. But it was a little girl with a teddy bear going down, the sh down a well, not into a cave. But apart from that, it's the same. <laughs> right. Anyways... People follow and try and find them. You've got the whole will they bump into each other in the middle bit halfway through the film. That's all very well and good. There's some personality changes when Simon gets bit by a spider, which causes neurological conditions, which turn Simon into Simon, the adventuring French chipmunk. Who has no idea who's this Simon you keep on talking about this. Anyway, he's he really makes his opposite number feel special, so that's kind of nice, which then means that Alvin is trying to be responsible, and he's got to admit, it's hard. Theodore's just going, well, if everyone else is changing their personality, I'm going to take some risks. And Simon is Simone, so he can't really get much more different. Uh, Brittany is having issues with her middle sister getting all the attention. That's kind of sweet in a jealous kind of way, but at the same time you're going, it's your sister, love her anyway. Uh, what else is there? Well, end of the film, there is, they're naturally on a volcanic desert island, which means it goes boom at the end. They manage to escape on a raft, and it <laughs> goes swimmingly. 
but it is kind of funky and weird for a while. There's also a lot of bits where I'm just going, okay, where the heck are they? Because there's a meerkat that turns up at one point. For no real reason other than to just be a meerkat on a desert island and get catapulted away and you never see him again. All I'm wondering is, where the heck is this island? Where did they get a meerkat? Hmm. And, you know, if there's one meerkat, where are the rest? Okay. Uh, there's also the incredi the incredibility of Simon noting the flora and fauna as though it's something he will have encountered on this unnamed random desert island. At the end of the day, that's not that realistic because generally every island's got something unique on it. Well, not everyone, but generally when you're in a weird desert island with no other islands anywhere near it, there's going to be some rare and funky plant and animal life. Like I said, where the heck did the meerkat come from? Uh, yeah. Back to the point of the inappropriate soundtrack. Um, basically, I listen to the soundtrack and they're doing Lady Gaga, they're doing Pink, they're doing stuff that on its own is really... It's controversy for controversy's sake music. And then they're cutesing it up by making a high-pitched chipmunk sing it, and somehow that's okay? What's going on here? Eh, it just worries me. Um, yep. Oh, where's the other bits? Chipmunk's inappropriate soundtrack. Oh yes, the whole family dynamic film. It's basically the idea of you get the impression they're trying to teach you that if the family dynamic screws up sometimes it compensates but at the same time just because things have changed doesn't mean you can't use this as an opportunity to change with it basically you've got Alan, Simon, Theodore Simon becomes Simone which then becomes the daredevil which means that someone's got to be the responsible one apparently so that's Alan's job now and Theodore just goes well what am I going to do? Uh, I suppose I could take some risks and be brave. I always wanted to be brave. There's also the slight ridiculousness of you have an ant you have the old film's antagonist wandering around in a pelican suit because he apparently didn't bring any clothes under the pelican suit, which is a very bad thing to do. Anyway, uh, yeah. The crazy castaway lady's a decent-ish performance. There's a bit too much of a castaway joke with an ensemble of balls being her companions. Not just one, a whole ensemble of different types. You have a golf ball, you have a baseball, you have an American football, you have a basketball. It's really weird, but that's kind of the idea. Anyway, um, yeah... That's about it, really. It's chip monkey. It's not a bad thing. It's not a great thing, I suppose. Oh yeah, there's also the interesting dance battle at the start with the girls in the salsa club, but you can enjoy that by yourself. Anyway, uh, if you want to watch it, watch it. There's some good bits, so it might actually be worth watching just once. If you don't like it, you don't like it. It's it's a good enough film for a chipmunk film. It's a family film. It's chipmunky. That's the only way I can describe it. It's chipmunky. Anyway, uh, see you next week and TTFN.